everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we are going to be going to Hawaii virtually. We're talking to Jonathan Hammond and we are talking about his book, The Shaman's Mind, Puna Wisdom to Change Your Life. So welcome, Jonathan. Aloha. It's so good to be with you, CJ. Aloha to you. So you're in beautiful Maui right now. Um, tell me a little bit, let's start off with, you know, about your journey to Maui and how you have been connected to this wonderful place you live. Yeah, I've, I've had the good fortune of, I now live here, but I had the good fortune of coming here um, very often for about the last 10 years. And uh, along with that was, uh, you know, developing a, a practice as a shamanic practitioner and uh, I loved Hawaii, but I never really thought to kind of look there for spiritual influence. Shamanism, to my mind, lived in South America and the, and, uh, the, the Americas. Um, and uh, but I kept having these uh, I started to have these experiences on Maui that, that were specifically relating to nature, to to the land where I, I would receive uh, 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 messages and a sense of communication, uh, a sense of. Uh, that that everything is alive and responsive in nature, and in some way wants to connect with me. And for some mm. reason, it was in it was in Maui that I uh, I began to really have those sort of those experiences, uh, really mystical um, uh, things. And then I began to look at the. Uh, I thought there's got to be something about the spirituality here. Then, and I began to to read it, and it was like. Everything that I thought I knew in my practice, everything that I thought I knew about psychology, everything, everything that I was doing in my healing practice were all, it was all sort of summarized in this wisdom that oh. comes from Polynesia. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was clever, but I found out that the ancient Hawaiians had been on to everything that I thought I knew uh, uh, for millennia. And uh, that really opened my eyes to just what I was experiencing, the, the mana, the power of this land. And... Um, and it's been theorized that this land is either the uh, originator the, of, of all the esoteric wisdom in the world or the recipient of it. We don't really know, mm. but the idea is, is that it is a real vortex for that. You know, it's even been mm. said that pre-Hawaii, that, uh, that these star beings came to uh, a continent called Mu, which is a, a huge continent where Hawaii now stands. And these mu these these beings or uh, the mu people um, it, it essentially infected the water, were attracted to the water and wanted to infect the water with the god molecule. And because water is the DNA of the planet, at the time when the planet was evolving toward love, on some level these these off planet beings came and infused the planet with that with that god molecule. And because everything's dependent on water, that that god molecule that love is in everything. And and there are there's uh, theories that that began here, so it's really mm -hmm. a beautiful place. Yeah. So the Mu, can tell me again who the Mu are in this scenario. Yeah. So so uh, th there was once a huge continent where Hawaii now stands in the middle of the South Pacific, and this is all pr really pre-Hawaii mm -hmm. and pre-cataclysmic shifts where Mu became something else, floods and all of that. Uh, that there were these 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 beings, these Mu uh, these uh, who were called the Mu people, but they weren't really people because they were said to have come from the stars. Mm. And some some Hawaiians uh, around here identify themselves as Lemurians. That's that's the oh. um, yeah yeah that's the, that's the other name for it. A Hawaiian wouldn't necessarily say Lemurian; they would they would say Mu. Um, but that that these were the beings that came from the stars, and mm. and um, and the sky beings that you know hover around the planet and just want to help and want to infuse us with love and want to bring us towards our wholeness you know that on some level it was time in the planet's evolution to wake up to love you know just as we're evolving or the earth is evolving and so at a certain mm. point and so at least uh, uh the the folklore is around the idea that that they were attracted to the water and they infected the water with this with this love with this and, and this began uh, uh, was the origin of all the esoteric wisdom, which of course is all based on love mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, throughout the world. Mm, beautiful story. So I want to loop back a little bit and then I'll, I want to go back to where we are, but I wanted to find out, you had said that um, when you were in Hawaii, you could hear that, it, that nature around you was speaking to you. Can you explain a little bit about what that was like for you? 
Well, one particular experience, which I, I write about in the book, I was I was on Haleakala Volcano, which is uh, out the window, uh, and uh, I, I was at the at the top, and um, and I had an experience of a whiteout of clouds around me, and I was pushed back where I could now I, I could no longer stand, I, I could no longer sit up, and. It was a kind of life review, dream-like, terrifying, exhilarating, wonderful, uh, confusing uh, uh, experience where I, uh, I, was, I was having a visitation. That's the only way I can describe oh. it. That, that there was a sense of that I was with whatever it is, I was with it and it knew that I knew that. Oh. And, that we were, and in that moment, uh, um, in that moment, some a message came to me at the time I was I was uh, an actor and um, I was feeling had been feeling dissatisfied with that for a long time but that was you know I'd gone to a, a very prominent drama school and I had Broadway credits and that was all that was something that wasn't going to change and I got the message right then and there that that it's time for you to change your life and um, and uh, it was it was such a uh, such an ego death in that moment mm. and, and because because um uh I had never thought to that I was going to move into becoming a spiritual teacher this way you know but it was it was clear that that's what um that that's what was being downloaded and mm. uh, so, and that was specifically just from the elements of whatever I experienced at, on that volcano wow and so that was your calling um, in a lot of ways to your spiritual calling and say, change your life around. And is that how you ended up moving to why or how long did it take from that moment oh, to that the was, point in which you like, oh, that was, yeah, that was the call. Yeah, that was, that was at least eight, eight, 10 years ago. Um, at least, um, no, uh, moving to, moving to Hawaii was, a uh, I, you know, I, I had a, I, at the time, New York city needed me you know, and, and I had a lot of clients and, uh, and I was really bringing, um, shamanic teachings, uh, and shaman and kind of shamanic counseling to New York city, you know, New York mm. city is so not about being in our nature. Right. And shamanism is so about being in our nature. And so New York city needed me. And then over COVID, um, I, I just, you know, I, I feel like COVID was a time when if you're supposed to change your life further, if you're supposed to leave a relationship, you're supposed to leave a job, you're supposed to geographically transport yourself. COVID was the time and is the time when when so many of my clients were making those choices. Mm. And uh, and I very much felt that. And it was just it was just time for me to go. And uh, and I just started aligning with uh, and using all the Huna uh, material and principles of, of for manifestation, truly using everything that I wrote about my book to to make this move happen. And so I've only been here since since January, but now this is my this is my home now. It's my destination. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Got it. So, what were the things that you were using in your book to manifest from moving to New York to Hawaii? What were some of the tools you used, and how did they work? Sure. Well, we're we're kind of talking about the seven principles of Huna. Okay. There are seven ideas. So the book is called The Shaman's Mind. And the reason why I named it that is because what I found in working with shamans on three different continents is that despite different cultures, despite different practices, they all tended to think the same way. I could sense that they were all their outlook of the world was was essentially the same, even even you know, the Far East, South America, wherever they were. And it was um and I didn't really understand what that was. And because of cultural differences or language differences, I could never really feel into exactly what that universe, universality of, of shamanic thinking was. Mm -hmm. And then I came across these seven ideas out of Polynesia. And it, I went, aha, th these are universal shamanic truths that, for my money, all shamans tend to, uh, to uh, align with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so seven ideas. The first one, and these are all based on uh, Hawaiian words that uh, have been translated into these principles by my teacher, Serge King. So I have to, I have to say that these aren't my ideas at all. Um, so the first principle says that the world is what you think it is. Mm -hmm. So that means that you create reality with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So not just that your experience of the world will be, uh, your experience will be your experience based on how you think about it, but that reality itself will shift and change based on how you think about it. Mm. 
Okay, so, so when you when you think, yeah. think about your trip to from New York, what were you think? What was the new thing that you're thinking of as a result of COVID that kind of manifested? Moved the movement. It was more that it was more that um, you know it's about beliefs. It's about beliefs. What you see if you think of reality as just a blank canvas, and mm -hmm. onto that reality you project your beliefs. And reality shifts and changes and, and it becomes smaller based on how small your beliefs are. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make the, the counterintuitive and expensive and a huge move from New York City to Hawaii, you, you have to align your beliefs with, with, uh, with, with the fact that this is possible for you. Mm -hmm. so it, 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 because because uh, the, the spiritual intelligences can only work with your beliefs. Mm. I often give the example of, you know, the the 35-year-old woman who lives in the city who says, if you're 35 and you're, you're still alone, you're going to end up alone, you know, that right. woman. And, uh, you know, and uh, as much as the intelligences, the spiritual intelligences would love to stick the guy next to her on the subway, if that belief is ensconced in her reality, spirit, that's what spirit has to work with. And spirit will just wait until she changes her belief because she's not even looking for the guy. Right. You know, and so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about um, adjusting your beliefs, mm -hmm. which leads to the second principle, which is the idea that the nature of reality is limitless. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can, the more that you can um, align your beliefs and your thinking with the idea that anything is possible mm. if you can figure out how to do it, is to open up all mm. sorts of possibilities and and. Um, uh, and potentialities. And the yeah. word is kala. Is that how do you pronounce the word? Kala, kala yeah. Then the first yeah. one, which is so the e you create e your. Yeah, ek is the world is what you think it is. Yeah, and mm -hmm. kala is uh, there are no limits. That's that's okay, second, got it. the limitlessness. Okay. The third, the third principle, makia. Uh, the translation is energy flows where our attention goes. Mm -hmm. So that means where you place your focus and attention invite in energies that bring to you the nearest equivalent of whatever you're placing your focus and attention on. Mm. So Hune is about, you have so much power with what's going on between your ears. Mm. And, and what, I, what I have found with people when I teach this material, I'll say to them, you know this, it makes sense to you, but you don't do it. Mm. You don't actually do it with consistency. So to place your focus on something and know that energies, creative energies are being invited in based on where you're placing your focus and attention with consistency. And mm -hmm. consistency is the key. Discipline. And I, I hate that word because I wish that there was a better one. But when we discipline our mind, that when a thought form comes in that is contrary that, to where we want to go, that is ant antithetical to our best interest, that you don't hold it close to your heart, that you don't invite it to tea. You know, in, in this philosophy, we're saying, focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. Mm. And it's not about that the doubt won't come up, but you don't give it clout and legitimacy. Mm. Okay, so that's ma Machia? How uh, Machia. Energy Machia, flows. Machia. Okay, and then the other one is, I, uh, you should pronounce it. <laughs> Manawa. Manawa. Now yeah. is the moment of power. Manawa. Manawa. So, yeah, Manawa. Now is the moment of power. So in, mm. in uh, the Hawaiian language, there are no past or future tenses. Mm. Everything only relates to the now. Mm. So in Hawaiian, a, a sentence like, I went to the store yesterday to buy milk would be translated in Hawaiian roughly as, my having gone to the store yesterday to buy milk is now over. Wow. So everything only relates to the present moment. So now is the moment of power because it's only in the now that you can access power because now is the only thing that exists. Mm. And so that means that you can start over in any given moment. That means that who you were yesterday is not who you are today. If you decide in the now, which is the only place where you can access power to be something different. Even the idea of predictive psychics they're not actually being predictive. They're only, the good ones, are only reading into present moment energies. Mm -hmm. And in that read, deciding that given the present moment energies, this is the likely outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the healing of going to a psychic is about, well, these are the present moment energies. And in the next moment, if you don't like them, you can change them. Mm -hmm. You don't do any of that in the now.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so cool. That principle. And the aloha that everyone says when you're in Hawaii all the time. Yeah, he's shouting love at each other. So uh, aloha, uh, aloha means love, means happiness. And mm -hmm. uh, the easiest way to think about it in terms of what we're talking about is um, that we are looking for love's perspective mm -hmm. in everything. So the thought form comes up, which is the one that's the most loving? What we're focusing on, what's leading us towards love? What, mm -hmm. Where can I find love in the present moment? Mm -hmm. And so, so we are always including love as, uh, as the, the, it's the only ethic in, in Huna that we follow. Mm -hmm. is, is love present? And mm. it is the choices that we're making, the actions that we're taking, are they leading toward happiness? Right. And so, so uh, that's that principle that we just, in, we infuse everything uh, with love. Love is, love is, uh, if, if I had to say, having worked with all the uh, different shamans that I worked with, that's their tool. Mm -hmm. That's truly their tool. That's mm -hmm. truly their tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mana? Uh... Mana. Yeah, mana. Uh, mana, um, the translation is all power. All power comes from within. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a big deal in this culture because in, this, in, in, in Western culture, we are taught to assimilate. We are all trying to fit in. We're all trying to keep up with the Joneses. We're, 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 we're shown on television how we're supposed to look, what our money's supposed to look like, who we're supposed to be, what a, what a man is, what a woman is. And uh, what this principle is saying is that to follow a spiritual life is to follow your own inner directives, that your life is created through you. And everyone given the fact that, given uh, the, the uh, uh, presupposition that there's freedom, but given the presupposition that there's freedom, everyone creates their life through themselves, that your truth is essentially the only truth that's real. Mm -hmm. you think about universal truth, the only real universal truth is everything is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything else is something someone made up and you get to decide what that is. Mm -hmm. And what's so, you know, to live a spiritual life more than anything else is to not care what anyone thinks. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's so much of what this principle mm -hmm. is getting at, because, mm -hmm. because the minute that you start assimilating is the minute that you're following someone else's authority more than your own. Mm -hmm. And if you think of, if you think of, and mana, another word for, uh, or another translation of the word mana is authority. And in that word is author, to author your own life. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that comes from you, you know, and so, it's, and so when we assimilate too much, we, we, um, we, we lose that part of us that may be taking us in a direction that we can't find in the mainstream, mm -hmm. that we can't find in convention, you know, the person who opens the bed and breakfast in Costa Rica, and that's right for them, that's because they followed something, because it's certainly not mirrored to them. By right. what's you know, right. what, what's appropriate. So that's what that principle is getting at. All power comes from within. I have all the power, and you have all the power. Right. And then the last is Pono. Is that right? Pono. Yeah. If, uh, and the translation here is effectiveness is the measure of truth. Mm -hmm. What's true is what works. Mm -hmm. hmm. What does that mean? I that I don't understand that one. Yeah. Say it again. Uh, effectiveness, meaning that the only thing that's true is what actually what we decide what's true by what works for us uh, okay got it so if, okay got it so okay. this is about, this is the invitation for a whole bunch of flexibility and creativity because if that doesn't work you try something else because what we're looking for in this this philosophy is one about if more than anything else is about effectiveness it's not about um uh, you know necessarily just being spiritual it's a, it's about living successfully about mm -hmm. actually getting what it is that you want you know, mm -hmm. things like manifestation, that's real. Things like healing, that's real. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we actually we actually can attain those things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we know that we're attaining them because we're there. And the means through which we got there were the effective means for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, God. So I think yeah. I, so if I were actually knit together based on what I've seen and but what, what you're describing, these seven principles of HUNA, so um, 
I'm thinking about, you've talked about yourself. I also have clients that are going through these major transformations as a result of um, COVID, which in a lot of ways, I view that as them finally being in the present moment. They are trapped inside, literally inside themselves as well. You know, the, when they're trapped inside, they're inside themselves. So they're, uh, they're totally in the moment of, of power at that point. There is nowhere but the present and who knows what, even what the future is going to bring. And what I've noticed is the beliefs that they have, have have varied, but you know it moves from, I realize that I don't like, maybe for you, it's where I'm located or I should be located someplace else. I may not like my job is what I heard a lot of. Um, and the possibilities now seeming like there weren't any possibilities because I'm in COVID, I'm trapped, I can't move anywhere, I'm just trapped here. Um, but when there is kind of, there is limitless opportunities, options, um, I don't know if this happened to you, your attention started probably flowing to new things. Like maybe I don't, maybe I could work at home mm -hmm. and I didn't even, I always wanted to work at home, but now people or companies are saying, you can work at home. This is now a valid option where you can take care of your kids, not be driving back and forth from one school, soccer practice, whatever, to another. You could just be at home. Um, so um, I think our energy went on the inside and we started thinking about what we wanted. At least that's what I saw. And I think the, it's very hard to look at these, this, light, this COVID as a place of love. But really, if you think about it bringing you a wake-up call, mm -hmm. which has happened to a bunch of my clients, that's a way of aloha. It doesn't look like love, but it truly is love. Um, and, and then once someone decides to make those changes, um, you know, you have your skeptical parents or friends going, you want to move to where, what, why, you know, all those kinds of things. And then here you are moving or moving to a new job, moving to a new physical location, and then having like, was it effective? Are you happy? Was this a good move? All you know is what you made a move. It's yes, I liked it. No, I didn't, you know, and then you just keep on navigating from the present moment. I don't know. That's how I'm imagining had these seven principles of Huna for my clients. But what happened for you? Well, you know, it's it, uh, you're, it's everything that you just said. And and you know, now I think of COVID and people people get mad at me for this, but uh, uh, this is my experience. I think of COVID as a spirit even more than a virus. So the 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 day after. We watched CNN and they said, you're not going outside anymore. I got sick the day after. Wow. And I had COVID for, I had COVID for a month. And, and in that month, I felt like, first of all, I felt like I, um, uh, because I was able to experience, I didn't, I thank God I wasn't hospital or anything like that, but because I was able to experience it from the inside and because I was able to journey with it, it really felt like a, um, a kind of makeover. It felt like um, it felt in some ways that that um, that you know the headache was so bad and it felt like it was opening opening uh, my my sixth and seventh chakra. It felt like then I, I then I began seeing things on television about that it comes from bats and from a shamanic perspective, bat medicine is about death and rebirth and also mm -hmm. metaphorical death and rebirth. And so I feel like COVID um, a COVID works on on people, however it works on you, whether or not you actually get sick from it or not, that it is an evolutionary spirit mm. that, is, it, that, is, that is taking us all toward uh, something. And, and so the fact that people are waking up is because um, COVID sort of came in, the earth said, uh, it's time for us to wake up further. And mm. so I have to put this in and I have to send you all home and send you to your room and see what you've done and really go inward and look at, is this right for you? You know, because we can't, we can't keep going as is, and you can't, can't keep going as is. And so it, it's so much, um, uh, and, and it's about moving more toward what is natural for us. 
Mm. So this time on the planet is, um, uh, you know, Carl Jung, in, he wrote a book in 1951, uh, where he said that in uh, December of 2020, uh, in 1951, he wrote this, in December 2020 would be the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Mm. What does he mean by that? What Jung meant was that, that the previous 2000 years would be a battle between good and evil. As, as is evidenced by the teachings of Jesus, a battle that we lost, right? We didn't, we didn't win that battle between good and evil. And he says that, uh, that starting in December, uh, of December of last year, that we would be entering into the age of Aquarius, which, and what he meant was the age of individuation. Individuation means that we align with our darkness, that we integrate our darkness. And that's why all of this uh, uh, political unrest and, and uh, racial injustice, all of that is coming up because the, the, the darkness that is held in the collective unconscious is being now uh, offered to the light to be integrated. We all have to take responsibility for that stuff. And that's the process that we're moving into, all because of this virus. Mm. The spirit. Right. So you can actually view COVID as a transformational energy, sort of like ayahuasca, you know, like that's plant medicine where you go sure. and like, and sometimes people take ayahuasca and have really bad trips. And sometimes people take ayahuasca and have life, you know, glorifying beauty, angels, whatever, you know, yeah. so it's, but whatever it is, you walk away being transformed. That. I think, you know, it's not to it's not to diminish. I mean, it is real. It is it is real. It is uh, devastating for some. And you know, when, when we're talking about this kind of uh, global, even universal evolution, you have to pull the lens back. Far, where where we're not just dealing with our own individual egos. Of course, we don't want to get sick. Of course, we don't want loved ones to die. But this is a much bigger uh, um, force that is that is uh, directing the flow of where we're going. Right. That's the first time I've heard that. And I've been talking to people over the last year about this topic. And I think it's a really, um, I think the idea of it as like a helping spirit was, I've never heard that before. And I, but I, I, I have to say that I agree with it, honestly, because if you think about plant spirits, animal spirits. I mean, they're there to help you make a shift of some sort. You know, they're helping spirits. It's hard to look at COVID as a helping spirit, but um, it has the opportunity to be a helping spirit. Whether people have taken that opportunity is a whole nother matter. Um, so we've been talking to Jonathan Hammond about his book, the Shaman's Mind. And as he just evidenced, this is a completely different way about thinking about even current events. Um, we've just been reviewing the uh, seven, um, the seven, what are they called again, Jonathan? The seven, seven principles, principles of HUNA. Thank you so much, really interesting.